Oké, okay, mijn naam is Nick van der Putten. I'm from the Tor Center in Rotterdam. In this presentation, I will give you the, the comparison between the ECG criteria for the prediction of the culprit artery in patients with acute myocardial infarction. Thank you. I like to mention that this is in uh, cooperation between uh, several university hospitals from Groningen, Leiden and Rotterdam. And the main persons in this uh, project are Arnold Dijk from Groningen and Arnhemijn from Leiden. Uh, a patient with symptoms of acute myocardial infarction uh, may be sent to a hospital for medication therapy or Wait, I am, that does not. Or to a um, primary PCI hospital for uh, primary angioplasty. The discrimination between those two therapies is made with support of the ECG. Uh, to, uh, the guidelines indicate that patients with a high ST elevations must be sent to a uh, primary PCI center and all the other patients to an other hospital for medication or thrombolysis therapy. ECGs may be made in the ambulance or at an emergency room or somewhere at a coronary uh, care unit. One of the requirements that there is a speed between the first diagnosis and the therapy, because that's the golden hour principle. Uh, the STEMI patients, that are st uh, patients with acute ST segment elevations, must be, uh, have a, a, a therapy of recanalization of the culprit lesion, and that's the main goal of this therapy. Why do you need to know the culprit lesion? The, the, the main goal of the estimation of the culprit lesion is that you may reduce the time for to reperfusion in primary PCI and also it permits quicker the risk of stratification. Here you may see an uh, angiogram of the culprit lesion. You see it's almost occluded and during primary uh, angioplasty, it will be uh, opened by a balloon and a stand. Uh, we have compared eight ECG algorithms in the prediction of the culprit lesion in uh, acute coronary syndrome patients. We have used the uh, algorithms of Fio and Tirla, which are recently, we have used the uh, algorithm of Mr. Wang from Philips in the United States and the older algorithms which were used in the early days but also more recently. Our study population uh, consists of ECGs and primary PCA data of 623 patients from which were treated in one of the four academic centers in Groningen, Leiden, some of them from Nijmegen in Rotterdam. Uh, we have uh, collected well-documented PCI data, data of patients which had an acute myocardial infarction. We have only selected uh, patients with suffering to single vessel disease, which is a timmy flow of zero, which means 100% occlusion and culprit lesion. Uh, who had at least one e digital ECG recorded maximally two hours before the first balloon implantation in, in the PCI. We have excluded, excluded all ECGs with a right or left bundle branch lock. Uh, the algorithms for predicting the culprit lesion are fairly simple, so I always hate to to uh, show algorithms, but these algorithms are so simple <laughs> that I will show them. Here you see the 
uh, algorithm for of Tirola from Finland for the predicting RCA or LCX. Uh, our 623 uh, patients were, we have distributed about in three groups, the non-STEMI and STEAM group. You would expect 100% uh, STEMI patients in our group, but surprisingly only 65% of our patients were STEMI patients and more than 35 patients were non-STEMI. Uh, we have, this is the collection of the data from 2008-2009, we are still collecting data, we are now we have more than 1200 patients and we have seen that our later, recent patients, there are more than 40% are from the non semi group, so in fact our non semi patients are increasing in our primary PCI uh, data. We have also made a subgroup I STEMI, which is inferior STEMI patients, where I STEMI patients have uh, ST elevation in the in two of the three, at least two of the three leads, two, three, and four, and and, and uh, I and uh, AVF. Uh, the results, the results of the ECT criteria for RCE, you, you may notice that the algorithms of Viol from uh, Barcelona and Tirola from Finland are uh, very promising, sensitivity and specificity is very well. We have had a cut-off of IM, which is the index of merit, which is the sensitivity and specificity minus 100, of 60 for fairly reasonable. Uh, performance of the results, and you see that Fio and Tirola are fairly uh, reasonable for STEMI persons. But when you are looking at the non STEMI data, you see a lower performance. The performance is decreasing. The same is valid for the prediction of the ECG criteria for the LAD. You see a very reasonable uh, estimation performance for the few and TLA uh, uh, algorithms in STEMI uh, patients, but the performance is decreasing for the non STEMI patients. But the ECG criteria for the left circumflex are disastrous. The specificity is very high for STEMI and non STEMI patients, but the sensitivity is very low. In the first part of my presentation, I will give you a conclusion of these results. So, our conclusion is that we have a moderate to poor performance of present algorithms for STEMI cases. TIRLA show the best reasonable performance for LED and RCA. Also, in other uh, papers, TIRLA showed the best performance. But for the left circumflex, the performance of all algorithms is poor. And in non stemi cases, performance is significantly decreased. So, in fact, you must uh, conclude that we need better algorithms to be useful in clinical practice. When you are looking at these conclusions, then you may conclude that there are more questions, more problems than answers. So I have made a discussion list of all possible questions. And the first one is that we have compared it with other studies. The, but that recent reports, all recent reports show similar outcomes for STEMI and non STEMI patients. But in our uh, group, we have worse results for our non STEMI patients. But in fact, our group is much larger than other groups. Maybe that's the reason. The detection of the left circumflex is a problem, also in clinical practice. We also know that 
patients with LCX occlusions may be referred to medication therapy and after one or two days they have a very large infarct and will be sent to a primary PCI center. The second, the third discussion point is that we all know that the ECG pattern is very dynamic and variable after myocardial infarction. And in Holland, maybe also in other countries, we only have one ECG available for diagnosis. Another discussion point is that in our group, but also in other groups, the number of STEMI patients is decreasing and the number of non-STEMI patients is increasing in the primary PCI population. At this moment in Rotterdam, almost 50% of the PCI patients is non-STEMI. And of course, better ECG algorithms but also faster clinical expertise in ambulance are required. Especially the last one, because if you are selecting non-STEMI patients for primary PCI, the ECG is not that valuable as expected. So I will eliminate those discussion points in more detail. When we are looking to the literature that we know that 40% of the left circumflex occlusions show minimal changes on ECG. So you must notice that when you have an ACS patient with LCX occlusions, you may have the wrong conclusion about therapy. And same is valid for 10% of the RCA and LAD occlusions. But also that multivessel disease and a primary prior uh, cabbage or prior myocarditis or ventricle all limit the ability to localize a new acute myocardial infarction. Yes, the ECG pattern is very dynamic and variable after PCI. In the guidelines, there is constantly t uh, spoken about persistent ST segment elevation. But is one ECG then sufficient? Probably not, because when we are looking to the four ECG phases of acute coronary occlusion, you have the hyperacute uh, phase, which is between 30 minutes and one hour after myocardial infarction. Then you may see that the ST level change is less than during the acute phase. In the first phase after myocardial infarction, there are much more prominent uh, T-wave and QRS uh, complex uh, changes. So in fact, after, in the hyperacute phase, you have to diagnose not on the basis of ST elevation, but on the basis of T-wave or QRS complex changes. There are also uh, cases in which the ECG pattern is very dynamic because the uh, arteries may occlude at certain uh, moments. This is one very interesting case, uh, which is not uh, very common, where a patient has a STEMI here, you see the ST elevation, and at the arrival of the hospital, you see a normal ECG. When we are looking at uh, 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 catheterization, you may see a 70% occlusion, but the next imaging, there is no occlusion anymore. After introduction of the guide wire, you may notice three occlusions in the artery, but after intravenous nitroglycerin uh, in induction, all, both the ECG and the angiography is normal. This is uh, a case from Milan. <laughs> also, the guidelines are much more clear than the clinical practice. In the guidelines, you may notice that the ECG can be equifocal in the early hours, and even in proven infarction, it may never show the classical features of ST segment elevation. That's only after one or two hours. 
And new Q waves, new Q waves, that's all, all, only after a number of hours or days. Repeated ECG recorders should be obtained, and when possible, the current ECG should be compared with previous records. In Holland, that's not done. When we are looking at the number of STEMI and non-STEMI patients, we see in our population that the number of non-STEMI patients is increasing. The same is valid in this study from the people in Boston, which is uh, published in the New England Journal of, of Medicine about two years ago, where they have compared uh, about a 46,000 myocardial infarction in a period from 1999 to 2008. And you may notice that the number of STEMI patients is decreasing from 133 cases per 100,000 uh, person years to 50 cases. So you have a decreasing of about 60% in 10 years. So they have to try to explain this and they try to explain this by substantial improvements in primary prevention efforts. So because better uh, treatment of the patients induces uh, has as a result that we have much less STEMI patients. But when we are looking at the non-STEMI patients in primary PCI population, there are studies, and one of them is from Wang and colleagues, he demonstrated that about 24% of the non-STEMI patients have a totally occluded coronary. So in fact, they have the same, uh, they have the, the same symptoms as the non-STEMI patients. These articles are the reason that in Rotterdam and in Groningen we have decided to introduce telecardiology, which is a faster clinical expertise as in the ambulance. So that you have a doctor who, who, who receives the digital ECG from the ambulance and may have direct contact with the patient and the ambulance personnel. We are, this is a uh, slide from the group in uh, Denmark, from the Aarhus group. We are still, we have developed a system now, but the introduction of this system has a price of about 200,000 euros, and that's the present problem. Uh, we also try to develop better ECG algorithms by inclusion of QRS and T-wave features on it. But we just saw a slight improvement of the of the, of the uh, performance. So in fact, we are still looking to for better algorithms. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nick. We have time for one quick question. There's nobody coming up with a quick question. <clears throat> Do you think that actually if you would take more, more ECGs in the ambulance that it would improve the system or would it be just more confusion. Uh, I think that, uh, that we may have uh, better information if we have more uh, ECGs. In fact, our first goal was to have ST segment monitoring in ambulance, but that was practically impossible. What we are now doing since half a year is uh, making two ECGs in ambulance, one at the start and one at the end just before entering the hospital. And then we have two ECGs, but we also have the time at the door of the hospital. So you, have, you may calculate the door to balloon time. So, so that's the reason for two ECGs at this moment. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Georg, sorry, during the break. <laughs> we are about, half, about quarter an hour late. <laughs> I would suggest I would suggest that we uh, delay the next session by, say, five minutes and then we chop ten minutes of the, of the coffee break. So I would like to suggest that instead of 
uh, one, 11 15 that we are here at 11 20 sharp thank you very much enjoy your coffee